shouldn't you get up hurriedly and go on your way without stopping? Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Blessed Mother. Did you have a good time during the Lunar New Year's holidays? You who are on board in Mary's Ark of Salvation, do not feel holiday syndrome, right? Amen. Armed with the five spiritualities, that's nothing, right? I felt I could not bear the pain I was suffering from since early this morning. It was exactly like death itself. So I was about to call 911 to go to the Jeonnam University Hospital. But then I thought, oh no, I will offer it up for those who will come to the first Saturday prayer meeting. And so I offered my pain for you. Yeah. And from that moment, I've never had that much flame in all my life. Lumps of thick mucus and flame came copiously out of my nose and throat. Even something black came out of my mouth when I was gargling with bamboo salt. I prayed, Oh Jesus, thank you. You are rooting out all the bad habits of the pilgrims who are coming for the first Saturday. <laughs> How much fine dust and pollution is there these days? How much of it will contaminate our throats, noses, and mouths? So I exclaimed, Wow, today all the bad habits clogging our pilgrims' souls will be cleared up. When Jesus tries to transfuse his blood into us, it will work better after those bad habits have been removed. You know, nylon materials don't absorb water, but sponges are good at sucking up water. Jesus on the cross shed his blood and water to the last drop from his body to save us. So, let his precious blood be transfused into our souls and bodies so that we are reborn to become his twin little siblings emulating Jesus. Amen. I was in severe pain and felt like dying to the point where I said, Can I live any longer? What makes it possible for me to stand in front of you now? It's the power of love. My heart yearns for you. No, I'm really unworthy and trivial. My love for you is truly huge. I might be wondering in my talk because I've not been able to think clearly due to my severe pain. I came here because just by seeing you makes me happy. <laughs> Jesus, 
Today is February 9th. On February 9th, 1983, I was on my way back from my in-law's house. I encountered a lady named A. When I mentioned her name, you may know her. Some of you might have been to her places. She was getting off the bus with so much things on her head and in her hands. Seeing me, she said, Julia, oh, I'm on the way back from Busan, where I've cured many patients. These are the gifts that I receive from those who are cured by my prayers. I was stunned at her words. We are not physicians. We are not the ones who can cure disease. If someone was healed through our prayers, we are just being used as the Lord's instrument. However, I saw many people who said they cured someone, even my acquaintances as well. Sometimes they would place a jar in a visible spot for people to donate for prayers. One day, a person who always prayed over others in Gwangju asked me to take her place because she had to go somewhere. So, when I delivered my message and prayed over others at the venue, people there began putting a lot of something in a jar. I found out that they were putting money enclosed in envelopes into it. I was so shocked about it that I immediately left the place. I thought it is not right. The lady A said that she received gifts from those who were cured by her. On my way home by bus, my heart ached thinking, this isn't right. Since it was just after I began offering up my suffering to the Lord, I cried from the depth of my heart. Jesus, how painful your heart must be. I prayed to Jesus to forgive those who accept money and gifts for the services of healing prayers using His name. I offer the prayers of life for her, praying to Jesus with my eyes closed. Tears flow down from my eyes. Then I thought about the time when Jesus entered Jerusalem mounted on a donkey. At the time, many of the people in the crowd spread their clocks and palm branches on the road and hailed Jesus with acclamations. But what did they do three days later? They cried out, He is a sinner to be killed! Let him be crucified! How painful it must have been for Jesus seeing them. But 
While the donkey was carrying Jesus on his back, Jesus was exalted by the crowd. If the donkey thought the crowds are hailing my master this fervently, it must tread softly while carrying Jesus so that he will be honored and safe on its back. But what if the donkey was jumping about gleefully, thinking that the cheering was for itself? Then what would happen to Jesus? Jesus would fall off the donkey or be in danger from its prancing steps. Then, how heartbroken he would be. I meditate on this and ask Jesus, Jesus, clothe me with ever-deepening humility. Please protect, take care of, and guide me so that I may not become one who tries to remove the speck from other eyes without first seeing the plank in my own eyes. Amen. Then Jesus said to me, Oh, my beloved little soul, I feel much pain in my heart because there are souls who even boast about making me known in their vain spirituality where their hypocrisy and greed are hidden. However, I am comforted because there is a little soul like you who gives glory to me with love and affection by calling upon my name only. Amen. Amen. Jesus accepted my prayers in his sacred heart. This message is not just for me, but it's for all of you. Avoid showing up to others in everything you do. By saying, I am really a worthy sinner, but I just did the best that I could. We should go forward with such a heart. By always returning all the glory to the Lord while lowering ourselves, we will become little souls who wash others' feet, right? Let's do that. When we totally entrust everything to Jesus, He will accept all our merits into His sacred heart. While we are undergoing our particular judgment after death, Jesus weighs our merits. Our merits will be born as fruit on the tree of eternal life. Seeing that, the Blessed Mother always intercedes for us with Jesus. But if we become boastful as if we ourselves cure them, how painful Jesus' heart must be. At least we who say we know the Lord and the Blessed Mother, let us set ourselves free from such vainglorious faith. If we arm ourselves with the five spiritualities and practice them, we will never show off like that. And I hope none of you here by any chance call others OOC. It refers lowering others in Korean. Please call one another, sister, brother. Amen. 
Because we are brothers and sisters in Christ, it would be good to call each other sister or brother, right? And I hope there will be no one calling our sisters without titles. But let me tell you, just in case, our brother Theodore joined the Rose family, not just volunteers, when he was young, as Peter Kim said a while ago. As I know, some people still call him Theo. But from now on, I hope you do not call him Theo, nor Theodore, but Brother Theodore. For those who are younger than him, call him Brother with honor fix. And for those who have known him for years, it will be good to call him Brother Theodore. <laughs> Even if we use honor fix for someone, it doesn't mean that we become lower. Even if I wash someone's feet, it doesn't mean that I become lower. Even if I kiss someone's foot oozing bloody pus, it doesn't mean that I may get infected and become a leper too. Our Lord loves those who lower themselves more. I've lived like that so far. Despite my loneliness, Jesus loves me. So may you all be loved by Him by lowering yourself. <laughs> but in order to be loved by Him, if you think, oh, how can I kiss the food? using bloody pus and do so with this taste, then you can never accumulate merit. It would be better for you to only pray for the sick. <laughs> In 1989, as I was returning from Gwangju by bus, <laughs> I met an old man with a threatening look at the Naju bus terminal. Everyone avoided him as he looked dirty. Even those who were walking moved aside to avoid him when they saw him. He didn't move for them and remained standing there. I prayed, Oh Jesus, today you have sent me another little Jesus again. I approached him and grabbed his hand. He was startled when I did this. I said, I'm not a bad person, however poor one may be. They may not want to be called an old man. There is nothing wrong at all if we call old men as sir or if we call old women as ma'am. So I said to him, Sir, I'm just trying to help you. I'm one who believes in God. Don't worry at all. Let's go to my house and I led him by his hand. When I held his hand, it was as cold as ice cubes. So I thought, oh, he must be sick. I was trying to take him to a nearby hospital, but he became frightened. So 
<laughs> there was an Ihua pharmacy next to the terminal. The pharmacist was a very kind lady from Seoul. She was also a customer of my beauty parlor. So we went there and I asked the pharmacist for some medicine for the old man. After getting the medicine, I brought him home with me holding his hand. It looked foolish to rich people. They said her friends are only beggars. <laughs> the Paris sister also said, Nobody can stop you. I feel dirty to approach you, Julia. To this extent, I got along with many beggars. <laughs> One day, the sister said, I lost to Julia. Lost for what? I have criticized you for always associating with beggars. She told me she had a dream in which she saw me taking all the dirty beggars into the bathroom and washing them one by one. What I was doing looked so repugnant to her. <laughs> so she said, Julia, come on out, come out quickly. I said to her, you may leave, I have to do this work. And I washed every dirty beggar one by one in her dream. So she said to me, I had lost to Julia. So I thought, yes, such losing would be good. <laughs> Yes, I am the friend of beggars, but I've never thought of them as beggars. I regarded each one of them as little Jesus. In those days, there were many beggars around. When I was young, people said that my house was a resting place for beggars and vendors. I stopped by market while taking him to my home. Is there still a male market in Naju? I'm not familiar with directions even in Naju. There was a birth house in the marketplace. The food there was said to be quite delicious. But I was not able to eat it, though I could afford it. I took him there, but I was worried that the owner might despise him if I told her that he was a beggar. So I asked the owner, Ma'am, I brought this person here, so can you please sell me a bowl of soup? Then I'll feed him outside, and when he has finished, I will sterilize your bowl. Then the owner said to me, Oh, of course, I'll do so as you are doing such good deeds. Then she served a bowl of soup, putting more meat than usual in it. So I fed him outside. Julia considered the owner's convenience. <laughs> I was afraid he would eat it in a hurry as he might have been deprived of a meal for a long time.
So I said a prayer before the meal as I always turn everything into prayers. I prayed that he would not get sick by eating too much meat, even though I didn't know for how long he had gone without food. Jesus, please change this meat so that he can digest it easily like porridge. <laughs> I fed him one spoon at a time. Had I allowed him to eat the meat by himself, he would have eaten it in haste because he was so hungry and it may cause him indigestion. So I fed him with a spoon and kept whipping away the soup that spilled out of his mouth. <laughs> He kept on snippling. Then finally he burst out crying, saying, People are getting hard-hearted today. I never thought a good person like you exists in this world. You are not like a person from earth, but an angel from heaven. No, I'm really not good enough, but I'm just trying to keep up with what God wants me to be. I replied. Before then, I would take a poor stranger in a shop to buy him clothing, but not this time. Thinking he could likely scare the owner with his tough looks, I asked him to stay outside the shop while buying a suit for him. Also, had I bathed him before buying him new clothes, he would have waited long without his clothes. Whenever I met a little Jesus or a little blessed mother, the first thing I always did was to buy them new clothes. Then we came home with his new clothes. I gave him a bath, cut his hair and dressed him up. He became a really decent looking man. What was previously a grumpy looking old man became a totally nice looking man. At the time, there were two rooms attached to the chapel. I let him into one of those rooms and left him there for a moment while I went to our house next to the chapel. But it just disappeared. I couldn't find him anywhere and looked all over the neighborhood. So I asked Jesus, Jesus, as you have sent me a poor old man, please guide him and care for him. Jesus replied, Yes, my beloved little soul. As you have prayed in my name, I will personally lead him. Do not worry at all. Your good deed has already been recorded in my sacred heart. I didn't know at the time, but as I now ponder about it, the old man was actually Jesus. We don't know when Jesus will come to us like that. Everyone around you is Jesus and the Blessed Mother. Jesus does not always appear in splendor as a majestic king when he comes to you, but he sometimes comes to you as a beggar. He had opened appear to me as a beggar before. He had opened appear to me as a beggar before. 
One day, another little Jesus came. While I was bathing him and letting him stand up, he suddenly urinated, and some of it went into my mouth. Oh, Jesus, 감사합니다. 이 오줌이 예수님께 살려신 그 고기한 보혈 물한방울 편동 남겨주사신 그 고기한 보혈로 내려신 생치고 제가 먹겠습니다. Oh Jesus, thank you. I'll consume it with semchigo, as if it were your precious blood and water that you shed to the last drop. Do you believe? Please believe it. We can offer many things in our lives with semchigo. This is the way we should live our daily lives.